How are we doing, guys? Good. Are you doing great? Good. <laughs> this experience every year, can you talk about what it does for the players? You know, we love it. We just think it's a great day. And, uh, you know, we had 200 or so kids from, from all over the Metroplex come out, and uh, they spent the morning with our players. And uh, we have 12 head coaches that we select, and then they draft their coaching staffs, and they get a chance to interact with these guys. And I'm just amazed at, at how our players go about it and the interaction and the connection they make with these kids. And, you know, we talked about this morning in a team meeting about, uh, you know, in so many ways you can have a really positive impact on somebody. This 15, 16, 17-year-old kid, as they're going through life, it might be something you say, an interaction you have with them that can really help put them on the right path. And I think our, prayer, our players embrace that opportunity. There are so many great moments when the kid makes a great play and they're running down the field, you know, chest bumping or high-fiving with our guys. I just think it's a really, really great day. You told us last week you only have three guys over 30, so the bulk of your team's not very far removed from yeah. being those guys. Yeah, you know, and I, I think in a lot of ways they see themselves in these seats. I think they remember going to some kind of a camp like this. And, uh, you know, I think they understand the importance of this and, and, and how they can have a positive impact, maybe like someone had a positive impact on them. And, you know, our guys had big smiles on their faces. They were competitive when they lost. Uh, you could tell it was hurting them inside and uh, a, lot of, a lot of ribbon back and forth, but just a really fun day for everybody. Great day for your specialist. You got Bailey yeah. and Jones as, in the championship. Yeah, how about that? You know, and we had some, some hesitation about making those guys head coaches, not because they're not great leaders, but, you know, uh, they're specialists. There's no special teams in this camp, but uh, they did a great job organizing their guys. They drafted well. They picked some good guys to coach with them, and uh, it was good to see them out there in the finals. Uh, what did you guys accomplish in OTAs, you think? Oh, I think we accomplished a lot of things. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a lot of new guys on our team, just like there is every year, so you're teaching them, you know, how we do things just day to day, how we meet, how we walk through, how we practice. You're teaching them the new schemes, and uh, you're trying to get them integrated with the guys who have been here. And you're starting to build the 2018 team. And uh, you know we're really fortunate that we have a lot of guys who live in the Metroplex or around our building throughout most of the off season. You know the attendance uh, at the captains' workouts uh, at the early part of the off season at the OTAs has been fantastic. So uh, again, each and every day you come in here, you're trying to learn something, but you're trying to build a team you're proud to be a part of. And, and we've taken a lot of steps towards that end. Do you expect uh, David Irving and Zach Martin to be at the mini camp next week? I uh, don't really know. You know, David's been in and out uh, uh, over the course of uh, these OTAs. Uh, when he's been here for practice, he's just run on the side. And uh, you know, Zach has not practiced with us since we started OTAs, but he has been working out in the building. So uh, we'll see. Uh, we're focused on the guys who are here. Guys who are here have done a really good job. Would you be hesitant to practice Zach even because he's not been on the field doing these OTAs if he does? Yeah, that's, that's a hypothetical. He's in great shape. You know, he's been in our program uh, all year long, and uh, he's working, you know, on the side with our strength coaches right now, and uh, and just doing a great job. He's a professional. So if he's here, you know, we'll certainly be mindful of that that he hasn't practiced yet, but. You know, we wouldn't put him in a situation he can't handle, but he can handle most things. He told us at the start of OTAs that David was, was, was trying to get himself back in shape. The fact that he hasn't been here to get in shape, is that kind of disappointing? Well, he's been handling some different things uh, in his life right now, so he, he has not been a regular participant in the off-season program. So when he's been here, we have not put him into practice. We've had him run on the side. Because of those situations, do you have some leeway in, in imposing the fines if you don't take part in minicamp next week or if, if they don't? They don't practice there. They get fined. Do you have some leeway? Yeah, there? yeah the, you know, the only mandatory part of the off-season program is next week, the three-day mini camp. So that's the only time you really can find someone. And uh, you know, so we'll have discussions about that specifically. We have a structure in place, uh, you know, on our team for how we find people if they're if they're late for things or if they miss things. And uh, you know, we'll we'll take each situation uh, individually. Leighton wasn't practicing yesterday. What's the latest with his ankle? I think yeah, is. his ankle has been bothering him, so he has not practiced uh, the last few days. Uh, we'll see if he's available next week. We don't think it's a long-term thing. Dak just told us, you know, there's not a ton of difference between OTAs and minicamp on his end. Does anything change for you or your staff in terms of what you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, it, it's really the same kind of a day. Uh, there's a, a little specific things where we try to relate the schedule to the regular season schedule a little bit more. In OTAs, you don't meet after practice. We'll have a chance to do that next week to catch up on the tape. Uh, but really, other than that, it'll be the same kind of a practice and the same kind of a day for everybody. The Ravens had a couple of OTA days taken away. How mindful are you guys of, I don't know how you have a football practice without con contact, but how mindful are you of the off-season rules and when you guys
guys do out there? Well, we're really mindful of it. I think most teams around the league are. Uh, you you want to make it a productive time, but you want to do that, you know, within the context of the rules. And we practice. We practice in helmets and jerseys. So no one's more interested in keeping the players healthy and safe uh, than I am and than we are. Uh, we want to keep our guys uh, healthy to be able to practice each and every day and play in the season. But you also want to be, you know, make sure these practices are productive. So you try to find what that line is. Uh, we're very outspoken to our team about you know, what the tempo is. Uh, we talk about that before we get started. And then if we're not living up to that tempo, going too fast or too slow, you know, we'll put it on tape in a meeting and show them what we're looking for. So uh, we never want players on the ground. We don't want contact. We don't want any of that stuff. But we do want a competitive practice, and I think our team understands that. How do you define contact? Because there's contacts every play. I mean, your O-line, D-line, and is contact tackling? Is how do they define yeah, it? yeah, we certainly don't want to tackle, and we right. certainly don't, don't want anybody on the ground or finishing blocks or any of that. But we are in 11-on-11 11 11 situations where we block and get off of blocks. But I think, you know, particularly the veteran players have a good understanding of being able to be competitive, using their technique in a way that can be productive. But at the same time, we're working together in this thing. So, and, and oftentimes as coaches, you have to teach them. You have to show them this is what we're looking for. This is not what we're looking for. And over the course of the OTAs, hopefully you get the tempo right. How does the chemistry being developed between Dak and receivers in the tight end? I think they're doing great. They're working hard together. Again, everybody's been here in the off-season program. They've worked well in the OTAs. I think we've improved, uh, particularly with the new guys and the young guys we drafted over the course of these last nine practices. Uh, real tribute to those guys just about how they go about it every day. Uh, we have a long way to go uh, with those guys, but also with everybody in our team. But you want to go about it the right way. You want to improve every day, and I think we've done that. There's a different mindset. I mean, just watching the goal line drill yesterday, and obviously in the past, you know, the goal line was – probably looking for death. So, you know, you know it's going to match up if you're having a mismatch or whatever else. But now you, you have to find this goes to open guide and find somebody you have to count on, like rely on in those situations. Yeah, I think the best pass offenses I've been around in my career, I have a lot of different guys you can throw the ball to. You can attack the defense a lot of different ways. And certainly it helps when you have a big-time playmaker. He typically draws a lot of attention of the opposing defense. Uh, but you want to read things out. You want to be able to throw the ball to the five guys who are eligible and uh, attack the coverage, attack the mismatch that you want. So Des has been a great player for us for a long time. Uh, we feel good about the guys we have here. And we're, we're teaching them our system. They're learning. They're getting better every day. We're excited about the group. With guys like Sean and Demarcus, maybe Tony that have been working off to the side, will they do more like individuals or anything this week? Uh, I'm trying to remember with Sean. I think he might have done some individuals in minicamp a year ago. Yeah, they might do a little bit more. Uh, again, they're on a, on a progression coming back off of an injury. We don't want to put them into a bad situation, a competitive situation. But we want to we want them to progress every day. And you know, Britt Brown and Jim Maurer and our training staff, they do a great job. Mike Wojcik and our strength staff, they do a great job getting these guys back. And you know, the guys you mentioned are the hardest workers we have on our team. So they're getting themselves ready to go. And whatever they can get into next week, we'll, we'll give them a chance to do that. If not, we'll give some younger guys an opportunity. Where have you seen Dak grow the last few weeks in the OTAs? I just think on everything. You know, we're working on technique. We're working on understanding of what we're doing, of what the defense is doing. You know, timing, anticipation, accuracy, the things you work on with with your quarterbacks really each and every day. And uh, he, he, too, is one of the best workers I've ever been around. He comes to work every day with such a spirit to get better, and, and you see him improve right before your eyes.